we mentioned nuclear quite a few times. Yeah. That, you know, there was a, for a long time, it seems to have shifted recently. Maybe you can clarify and educate me on this, but there, for the longest time, people thought that nuclear is, um, is uh, almost unclean energy or dangerous energy or all that kind of stuff. When did that shift? What was the source of that alarmism? Uh, and what maybe is, is that a case study of how alarmism can turn into um, the, a productive, constructive policy? <laughs> you- <laughs> productive from whose standpoint? Um, <laughs> I lit- is it not? Is it not like a nuclear? Well, no, I was trying to. Be, oh. do you mean productive in terms of yay, we banned it, or productive for those? Oh, who I went? see. I see what you mean. Yes, um, I meant productive for human civilization. The, no, the alarmism over nuclear power dominated any alarmism over global warming. Absolutely. Oh, uh, really? Oh yeah. It, it, this in the United States, um, Three Mile Island. Then you had Chern- Chernobyl there, and the traditional environmental movement won't still won't go there. They still, the big groups, uh, NRDC, EDF, that whole alphabet soup of the big greens, uh, are reluctant to put forward the nuclear option because they know a lot of their aging donors basically grew up in the thinking about nuclear as, as the problem, not the solution. I lived for the last 30 years. I moved to Maine recently, uh, but I lived in the Hudson Valley, uh, 10 miles from the Indian Point nuclear power plant which was built in the 60s, 70s, and had some problems. None of them were to the point of a meltdown or the threat of it, or even the theoretical possibility of one. I've been in, I was in it twice as a reporter, you know, looking down in the cooling pool. I can send you a fun video of bubbles in the cooling pool with the rods. And progressively, they demonstrated how to handle waste. In the United States now, the waste is, uh, because we haven't figured out how to move it across state lines, it's uh, com- uh, glassified. It's put into kind of containers that sit there at the plant. We just sim- simply don't have a long-term solution. Um, the uh, Nevada uh, politicians were successful in saying, not here, not here, not Yucca Mountain. And, um, but my wife who I've been married to, well, I met 30 years ago, and she lives with me. She's an environmental educator. She was very happy when Cuomo shut it down, said we're going to shut it down three or, three or four years ago, which just happened a year. It actually is shut down now. It's being mothballed. And I was like, that sucks. Hmm. We need... It, but she's happy. Yeah, and we still love each other. And but, she's an environmentalist, so that, that yeah. just speaks to a lot of environmentalists still see nuclear as bad. Oh, totally. Oh, yeah. Uh, you know, and you bring in the the, way, the the weapons proliferation issues, and but it's a safety thing. It's it's a generational thing. I think young people are different. Uh, I hope these small modular reactor designs, several of which there's a couple of PhDs from MIT uh, who did transatomic power. They're they're both like in their early 30s. We need so much more of them. And just briefly, the one thing I say about nuclear is. Like with so many of these things, like subsidies, don't talk to me about yes, no nuclear. Talk to me about what do you want to do with existing nuclear power plants? And what do you want to do about the possibility of new ones? Let's parse this out in chunks that we can have constructive conversations about. The idea of no nuclear drives me crazy, just like no fossil fuel subsidies is silly in the world we inhabit that has these pockets of no energy. So that... That's just my, you know, my sustain what mantras. Start with some dividing it and divide and conquer. To conquer the dispute over by saying, let's at least get real. This power plant has been in the Hudson Valley for 30 years. It was the base load. It was base load. Base load is a real thing. And guess what has filled the gap since that power plant has turned off? Natural gas. Natural gas. But, and you don't hear that from the environmental community that was so eager to turn off the Indian point. I, I think both the point of, you know, saying that people are saying it's the end of the world, but no, I don't want a nuclear power plant. It just doesn't right. make sense. Right. Um, and, and Andy's absolutely right to talk about, so existing nuclear power plants, we already pay for them. We already have them. Right. We already committed to decommissioning them eventually while they're running, they're pretty much the cheapest power you can possibly have on the planet. 
because it costs almost nothing to run them day to day. So, you know, it's basically cheap or almost free yeah. CO2 base load power. There's just nothing there that is that doesn't you know you, sh you should embrace. Now, new nuclear power plants turn out to be very expensive currently. So, you know, the one they built in Finland, sure. uh, some in and 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 the UK and France and several other places turn out to be incredibly ex expensive. So, they're much more expensive than, you know, the uh, the the costliest uh, renewables you can imagine. So, they're actually not a solution right now. And that's why we need the innovation. That's why we need the potentially sure. fourth generation nuclear power. It's just simply, it's a bad deal. And that's why, you know, uh, nuclear is never going to win on its third generation. Now, it may never get there. You know, who knows? But it's certainly a, 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 a possibility and we should yeah. be looking into it. And there are, there are, you know, wonky realities that need to be dealt with. The Nuclear Regulatory Commission in the United States, their approval process is still locked and designed on this 50-year-old model of big, giant power plants. Mm. There's an intense discussion right now about evolving a new regulatory scheme for small modular ones because of all these implicit advantages they offer. And that, so it, along with the innovation, you need to have this Regular get out of the way innovation. or you're never gonna have the investment. Yeah. So, so it, it really is an all of the above thing. And, Looking at these as systems uh, problems, as systems solutions is really important.